Hello, I'm Andy, IWDCF instructor. In this video, I'm going to talk about reverse circulation well killing that always been part of the IWCF test for well intervention. So typically, we will have a production well that had been sucked in. Inside the tubing, we have a gas on the top, oil below the gas, and then we have a SSD above the packer by pumping a kill fluid into the annulus kill fluid later on will entering the tubing displacing all the tubing content and the annulus content to the kill fluid we kill the well so the well bore fluid will be evacuated from the tubing head passing through the choke kill brine will pump into the annulus the pump that we will use will pump at constant flow rate and we will maintain the pressure at the circulating point here constant by adjusting the choke opening. To simplify, very often we will draw a diagram like this, u tube diagram, one side is the annulus and the other side is the tubing. When we pump fluid into the annulus, the fluid inside the tubing will be displaced up and it will change but the fluid below the circulating point will be considered the same or unchanged. Now let's see the initial condition. We will concentrate inside the tubing. In this example, we have gas inside the tubing from surface to 4000 feet depth and the gas gradient is 0 0.11. Oil from 4000 feet down to perforation and the oil gradient is 0 0.36 psi per feet. SSD at 7900 feet and the SSD is still closed. The reservoir itself has the pressure gradient of 0 0.49 psi per feet at 8000 feet from surface and therefore the pressure of the reservoir is 3920 psi. The well will be killed with 200 psi overbalance. So the bottom hole pressure during well killing will be 200 over 3920. So the bottom hole pressure is 4120 psi. In the annulus, we have 0 0.45 psi per feet brine, which is not enough to kill the well. And therefore we will displace this brine with heavier brine, kill brine, later on the well will have a zero pressure in the annulus and in the tubing. Now let's start the calculation. Hydrostatic pressure of the gas is 0 0.11 multiplied by 4000 feet of the gas column giving us 440 psi. Hydrostatic pressure of the oil from gas oil contact at 4000 feet to SSD level at 7,900 feet is equal to 0 0.36 psi per feet oil gradient multiplied by the interval giving us 1,404 psi and hydrostatic pressure of the oil below the SSD from the SSD down to the reservoir will give us 36 psi of hydrostatic pressure. The bottom hole pressure like we said, we need 200 psi over balance and therefore we have to maintain bottom hole pressure at 4120 psi. Part of the question very often is how much pressure need to be maintained at SSD level. The pressure at the SSD level can be calculated by subtracting 36 psi from 4120. So we will have this relation 4120 bottom hole pressure minus 36 psi will give us the pressure at the SSD inside the tubing 4084 psi and this pressure need to be maintained constant during the circulation we will calculate the initial tubing head pressure at this stage which is equal to 4084 psi pressure at the SSD minus 1404 psi pressure of the oil and then 
440 psi hydrostatic pressure of the gas column. It will give us tubing head pressure initially equal to 2240 psi. Remember, overbalance of 200 psi is already included. We finish with pressure balance calculation in the tubing side. We will see what will be the hydrostatic pressure in the annulus. Annulus only contain one fluid which is 0 0.45 psi per feet brine, compression brine which is available in the annulus, and this compression brine providing 3555 psi of hydrostatic pressure from surface all the way to the SSD. Therefore, if we open the SSD later, we need to equalize the pressure and to equalize the pressure, we need to apply extra pressure at surface here so the pressure at the SSD outside the tubing will be the same with the pressure at the SSD inside the tubing and we need to apply 529 psi at the top of the annulus again the pressure and the fluid below the circulating point will not change during the killing process. So this is our pressure balance when we finally opening the SSD and start the well killing process. At the beginning, we will have 529 PSI in the annulus and 2240 PSI at the tubing. We will pump kill brine into the annulus and the oil will go up and the gas will go out of the well. So oil moving up, gas finally completely out of the well. We still have oil in the well and kill brine entering partially the annulus and the completion brine that was filling up the annulus before will fill up the bottom part of the tubing. Now obviously the pressure at surface will change if we maintain the pressure at the SSD constant equal to 4084 psi. The pressure at the tubing side will be 4084 psi minus the hydrostatic pressure of the oil and then we need to consider also the hydrostatic pressure of the brine that entering the tubing from the annulus through the SSD. Hydrostatic pressure of the brine entering the tubing is equal to 1800 psi and therefore the new tubing head pressure by the time the gas is completely out of the tubing will be equal to 4084 minus 1404 hydrostatic pressure of the oil and 1800 psi hydrostatic pressure of the brine inside the tubing and therefore the tubing head pressure will be 880 psi. Kill brine already entering upper part of the annulus so the annulus pressure is decreasing is no longer 529 psi. If the tubing capacity is 0 0.0083 barrel per feet then we will know the volume of the gas, 4,000 feet of the gas, and then it will give us the volume of the kill brine that we need to pump into the annulus to displace all the gas out of the well. We come to the second stage, which is evacuating the oil. If we continue pumping, then we will have more kill brine entering the annulus, the original completion brine will continue to fill up the tubing and pushing the oil out of the well. So at the end, inside the tubing, we only have completion brine. The whole tubing now has single density fluid. The hydrostatic pressure of the completion brine inside the tubing will be 7,900 feet multiplied by 0 0.45 psi per feet equal to 3,555 psi. And therefore, the tubing head pressure will be 4,084 psi 
minus 3,555 psi equal to 529 psi. The annulus pressure will continue to decrease so the annulus will be filled up by more gilbrine and therefore the annulus pressure will decrease further. Now we can also calculate how many barrel is required to displace all of the oil out of the tubing by multiplying the tubing capacity with the heat of the oil column. At the some point, gilbrine will reach the SSD. Interestingly, during this period, the fluid inside the tubing is not changed yet because it is still the same fluid which is original compression brine and therefore the hydrostatic pressure inside the tubing is not changing. The tubing head pressure will also not change. So we don't need to recalculate. We still have 529 psi at the tubing from the time the oil is out until the time the gilbrine reaching the SSD. The volume of the gilbrine that need to be pumped to reach the SSD is equal to the annulus capacity 0.0244 multiplied by SSD depth 7900 and it will give us 192.76 barrel. And by the time we pump 192.76 barrel, the whole annulus will be filled up with the gilbrine and therefore the surface annulus pressure will be equal to zero. Now, if we pump further, the gilbrine will start to fill up the tubing and at the end it will reach a surface. And once the gilbrine reaching surface, the tubing pressure will also be zero. The density of the gilbrine at minimum must be able to provide the same hydrostatic pressure at the SSD level and therefore the minimum density is equal to 4084 psi divided by the depth of the SSD 7900 and it will give us 0 0.517 psi per now our well is killed so in this kill graph we see the evolution of the tubing pressure brown line in the curve and the evolution of the annulus pressure the blue line here we know that at the beginning of the well killing we start with 2240 psi at the tubing head and once we start pumping the kill brine the tubing pressure going down the tubing pressure reaching 880 psi by the time all the gas is out of the tubing at the time we already pump 33.2 barrel which is equal to the tubing capacity multiplied by the gas column heat inside the tubing we pump further we are evacuating the oil now the tubing pressure continue to go down from 880 until reaching 529 when all the oil is out the additional volume that we need to pump is equal to the oil volume inside the tubing which is tubing capacity 0 0.0083 barrel per feet multiplied by oil column it will give us 32.37 barrel so gas volume plus oil volume will give us tubing volume above the SSD it is equal to 0 0.083 multiplied by 7900 65.5 barrel so this point is 65.5 barrel now when we pump the kill brine the annulus pressure is continue to going down going down going down and going down and by the time the whole annulus is filled up by kill brine from surface to the SSD the annulus pressure reaching 0 psi so in this graph, annulus pressure becoming 0 psi after we pump 192.8 barrel. Now, starting from this point, the kill brine is entering the tubing and therefore the tubing pressure is decreasing. So the tubing pressure will decrease from 5 to 9 all the way to 0 and tubing pressure reaching 0 psi after 
the kill brine reaching surface so the additional volume that we need to pump from this point to this point is equal to tubing volume so here is our kill graph and now our well is completely killed